let's talk about missing and murdered Indigenous women. Is it fair to say that this is one of your top priorities as Interior Secretary? Absolutely. Okay, so I suspect most non-Native people do not even know this is happening and that it's an epidemic. Can you talk a little bit about how severe the situation is and why it's happening? Yes, well, let me just, I mean, you know, the statistics are staggering. I probably don't have to tell you. You probably have read them and you have them in front of you. But, but think about this, like, imagine right now, even in the city of Washington, D.C., imagine if 23 women just, you know, disappeared, right? They disappeared. One of your coworkers, one of, uh, one of my coworkers. Uh, the woman who, uh, you know, who I see every day outside walking her dog. I mean, what if like 23 women just disappeared overnight in a city even this size? And imagine uh, that those women disappearing in a small town somewhere in, in the Western United States. I mean, th there are, um, you know, four out of five American Indian Alaska Native women um, have experienced violence in their lifetime. More than half have experienced sexual violence in their lifetime. I mean, these are women who, who are being abducted, uh, they're being murdered, they're being raped and murdered, and, and it, it, is, it is staggering, and I want people to care about it. So some of the stats that I've read about this, and I've, I've reported on this, are are just, like you said, it's pretty stunning to imagine this happening in like your own community. There was a really big November, 2018 report by the Urban Indian Health Institute that you may know well. They found at least 506 indigenous women and girls have gone missing or been murdered in 71 cities. And that includes more than 330 of them since 2010. And that's still likely a big undercount because law enforcement just isn't collecting data on this. And to me, that feeds into this broader issue of invisibility that I think I've heard from many folks about how Native people feel like they're being, they've been erased, like whether it's in media coverage or in, in education or in now in crime reports. And I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that. Why is there this sense of Native people just being erased in, our, in America? Right, well, I think part of it in the word invisibility, it, it, um, that is, that's pretty accurate because some folks do feel invisible. I mean, when you look at some of the images that folks, um, you know, put up about Native Americans, a lot of them are historical images, right? Like, oh, Indians existed a long time ago. I mean, and it's sort of, uh, it's even, uh, it's sort of the way uh, sen the senator you referred to mentioned it, but um, we're still here. <laughs> We didn't disappear. We don't, you know, I'm in a suit today. I'm not, I'm not um, a relic of the past. And my life um, is, is current and it's constant. It's, and I'm here because of my ancestors uh, survived all of the terrible assimilation policies and the genocide and all of the things that Native Americans have experienced uh, since um, the dawn of colonization. And so, um, I, I feel like we are, I mean, we need to do everything we can uh, to make sure folks know that we have a voice. And, and I feel very confident that right now it's a new era, right? Uh, we have a president who has made tribal consultation a priority, who's made environmental justice a priority, who has, um, who is, is in fact, um, uh, made a proclamation about uh, this issue because he cares deeply and he wants all Americans to care about it. So, um, so the invisibility part, that's real. Um, and, and, and that's one reason why we need to make sure that folks know we're still here. So why are indigenous women going missing and being murdered? Well, um, for the statistics that I mentioned, right? Um, um, sexual violence um, uh, and, and otherwise violence. They're easy targets for some folks, right? Um, um, I'll tell you this, when I went to, um, after I was elected, but before I was sworn in, I attended a Senate um, Indian Affairs hearing on this issue. 
And this woman, one of the witnesses talked about her sister going missing and her seeing her sister's sweater on the side of the road. And she reported that and went back two weeks later or a time later and the sweater was still there. It wasn't, it, 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 we don't, you know, we need to build the resources. We need to build the, um, the opportunities for law enforcement and for people to feel like people care about this issue. Does women are going missing because women are easy targets. And there's a, there's a, I mean, women in general, right? We, we experience these terrible, um, this terrible violence in, in many areas. It's particularly uh, stark in Indian country. Does it really take resources to go pick up a sweater? Well, I, I mean, a sweater is evidence, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you don't if you haven't um, put the resources in to train a police force on how to handle evidence, uh, you know, I think that those are things we need to support. It, it does that not speak to something larger that this just has not been treated as a priority issue by law enforcement or by the government? Because it certainly seems even with your anecdote about a sweater which is literally somebody going to pick up a sweater and, and do some you know, investigation around it and study it, do forensics on it. That, that seems relatively easy. And if you look at the broader statistics, it seems like this just has not been treated very seriously by law enforcement and by the federal government. Is, does that right. sound about right yes. to you? Yes, and which is why we want to put our arms around this whole issue and uh, make it an all of agency approach and make sure that we are doing everything we can to provide the leadership and uh, move, you know, move this issue forward as it should be. You've probably heard about our missing and murdered unit. It's in within the Bureau of Indian Affairs Office of Justice Services. And um, we, we plan to do just that, provide the leadership and direction for across departmental and interagency work uh, to, um, to help move this issue through. Part of it, uh, Jen, is that um, there are many different law enforcement agencies that might have, um, I guess, might have, um, you know, information on any issue, depending on where, um, where a crime happens, right? If it's on Indian land, it could be tribal police, it could be Bureau of Indian Affairs police, it could be federal police. If they have, uh, you know, memorandums of understanding or agreement with local uh, law enforcement agencies like the state police or the sheriff's department, uh, those could also, there's so many different law enforcement agencies that essentially might have a say or an idea about a certain crime. Um, we all need to work together to make sure that when something like this happens, um, that we're all working together to solve it because there are too many unsolved crimes currently with, with missing and murdered. So you, like you mentioned, you launched this new unit at the Bureau of Indian Affairs focused on missing and murdered women. And you also announced a joint commission with the Justice Department to basically hold hearings and gather evidence on, on these crimes and then to come up with recommendations on how to deal with it. Are you also planning, can, do you have any role in, in, maybe you don't now as Interior Secretary, but do you have any role in, in, in working on the Violence Against Women Act reauthorization, given that the tribal protections in there for women, for Native women are, are arguably a huge piece of the reauthorization effort. Absolutely, yes. The, those amendments in the reauthorization will absolutely help Native women. And, and we, I mean, we are going to do whatever we can to um, help this issue, to move this issue, to um, create a safer space. I mean, everybody deserves to feel safe, certainly. And uh, Native women are no different. So, um, so yes, we'll, we'll do whatever we can um, and take up whatever we can in our department to. Can you, can you personally get involved on that or is that not allowed now? Uh, personally get in, well, I mean, anything that uh, falls under our jurisdiction as far as issues go, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, we are, we're there.
So, so you wanna... could you could try to help get that bill reauthorized. Like you could get involved if. Oh, oh, of course, yes. I support the Violence Against Women Act reauthorization, and I did when I was in Congress. Um, yeah. And in fact, I had you know two of my amendments that went into that bill that unfortunately didn't pass the, during the time I was there. So no, we. We absolutely will voice our support for legislation that we think will protect people, certainly. And the Violence Against Women Act, I mean, I think everybody supports that. Or they should. Well, they don't currently in the Senate. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's a separate issue now. That's for the legislature. Um, and then the last thing I, I wanted to ask you about this was how will you measure success on this issue going forward? I mean, you've got four years max, three and a half years max as interior secretary, or, or at a minimum, I should say, three and a half years. Um, how will you measure success on, on curbing um, this, what is an epidemic that, that is pretty invisible right now, yeah. I would say? Yes, yes. Well, of course, we would love to see those rates go down, right? The rates that you talked about, we would love to see those decline in number. Um, but also, uh, there are... Uh, uh, a large number of family members right now who have no clue where their loved ones have gone, right? They're missing. Um, there are many, many unsolved cases and part of the missing and murdered unit is to ensure that we can go after those unsolved cases and, and solve them so that family members don't have to wonder anymore right they they need some closure there are um you know we we yes they need some closure so so i think those are two ways that we would measure our success 